All right, the clock is ticking. Close the doors, please. Clock ticking. Okay, hello, everyone. Thank you for being here today. My name is Elio Artuño. This is my team, Richard Belay, Ray Loaded. Today, we're going to talk about how we design and manufacture a senior project, which is a dynamics motor for the Formula SA car. Let's first talk about, a little bit about the Formula SA competition. Every year uh, in Michigan, there's this race takes place. You got universities from all over the world, they design their own cars and they have them compete in a series of different events. These events range from an uh, endurance event, velocity event, and so forth. And this Formula car is, is last year's car. Uh, that race, we couldn't, we couldn't get to compete because we had several uh, difficulties in the, in the engine in the last minute. But this, this year's car is slightly different. Um, all right, so many people ask me, uh, what do I mean by dynamic spoiler? Many people wonder, like, what is the point of having dynamic spoiler still in the vehicle? What advantages can we get? Um, the first advantage is that we have a, we can, we can adjust the amount of drag that we get in the vehicle and minimize the amount of drag while keeping the, uh, the appropriate amount of downforce at all times. And many engineers that, uh, that are in the business, they, engineers, okay, you try this? All right, so the first, the first goal of this project was to make the, the spoiler removable. The purpose of this is that we still, it's the first year that anyone does this in, in competition, we're not sure about how the judges are going to react to having it. And I'm just following the story from the SAE car since no one else has done it before. So making it removable is probably the safe choice. Um, although this matches with all the specifications, like all the rule books it follows, it follows the rules that the Formula the SAE car and uh, spoiler has to, has to have. Also, we still haven't tried it on the vehicle, so we don't know if the performance is going to be increased as, as we expected. Um, once we take it to the world game and when we confirm the performance has been increased, they will be able to to mine on the vehicle. So we went with the split wing design so that we could increase the performance of the car as the car, as the formula as the car travels around uh, the corners. The goal is to increase the amount of downforce that is applied as the car uh, travels around the corners. Also, we plan on maximizing the amount of downforce the car uh, receives while uh, braking. Uh, our split wing is driven by two Torxxus servo motors. Uh, these Torxxus servo, uh, the servo motors that we uh, chose have a built-in motor controller. The uh, motor controller receives a PWM, uh, a pulse width modulation uh, signal from the uh, from an Arduino Uno logic board. The Arduino Uno logic board that we chose uh, for this project, um, you know, Arduino is an open source. Uh, environment or project-based uh, logic board. Um, Arduinos are they're cheap and they're relatively easy to program with many different um, uh, examples of servos and, and sensor coding and how to set up um, how to set them up. For our project we decided to use three different um, inputs, one for steering, one for braking, and one for velocity. The velocity input comes from the ECU, the engine control unit of the car. Um, that will be supplied by a Formula SAE. Um, for the braking sensor, we decided to go with a flex sensor. Um, the flex sensor will measure the angle at which the braking uh, pedal is at. Um, a flex sensor, pretty much, it, as it bends, it changes its resistance, so it increases its resistance as it's bent. Uh, for the steering, we decided to go with the uh, a rota rotational potentiometer or ring potentiometer. Um, this will be mounted on the steering of the car, the steering wheel of the car, and will give us the angle at which the driver is turning around the track. We also decided to go with uh, to use a a force sensor so we can calibrate our uh, project, our Arduino and our coding. Um, the force sensor would be used in two steps. The first step would be to measure the braking. Uh, force or the bracing, braking force generated in the uh, brake pads as the driver presses down on the pedal. The second will be used for um, calibrating the amount of or measuring the amount of downforce the wind generates under a static load uh, during wind testing. Um, and I'll pass it off to Richard to talk about manufacturing. For manufacturing, we have to build everything from scratch. 
everything being by pipe bending, welding, drilling, milling, using the lathe. And the only thing we had to outsource was the plate bends. These plate bends was used to house our servo motors and also at the same time create our width for our frame. We started with the frame because it was our only limiting factor to how, how wide it could fit the car. Once we had the frame set is when we started manufacturing our carbon fiber wing. On our carbon fiber wing, we started with a foam block, took it to a CNC machine, and created a negative of our mold, of our air, air cool. This mold was then covered with wood glue to cover the pores of foam. Then after that, it was covered with orange tooling, which would create a hard surface to lay the carbon fiber. On this hard surface, we had to put a polishing compound, which is a uh, mold releaser, and uh, which is a wax, and then also a PBA, which kind of acts like a barrier between the surface and the carbon fiber. With, with the carbon fiber sheets, we used four layers of carbon fiber and resin in between each one, and that is set until it was cured. After that, we had the simulation for the wings. With the maximum these airflows can pull at 60 miles an hour is roughly 70 pounds of downforce and drag, depending on the angle that's in. With the SAE race this year, this race, it's an average of 35 miles an hour, which then changes the maximum speeds to roughly 35. I mean, the, it changes, it's using 35 miles an hour average speed and changes the maximum of 35 pounds downforce and drag, roughly. With these values, we used to program our Adreno Uno to give a, a rough estimate of where the wing has to be at a specific angle and turns. Well, once the car is built, we will mount it on the car and mount a force sensor to see the actual variables of forces. These new, these new, these new variables will then be reprogrammed into Adreno Uno to be used for our, our, final, our final race, our final program for the uh, uh, SAE mission increase this year. Now, for our cost analysis, you can see that the servos was the most expensive thing. It, it had to be the most expensive one because we had to specifically choose one that held the right amount of weight and had the right speed <coughs> to catch each turn due to the race having sharp turns. So that had to move fast. The rest just goes down accordingly and Luckily, our, our dynamic spoiler cost only $1,262. So, the Formula SAE competition, which is held in Michigan, um, it incorporates many different design teams from all over the globe. Uh, they come together to um, share knowledge and uh, tricks or manufacturing techniques on building Formula style SAE cards. Um, in addition, we have, since we use the Arduino Uno and the Arduino um, you know, open source uh, logic board, we uh, plan on giving back to the Arduino community by uploading our designs and our project and including the coding so that uh, future people or project or, uh, or groups can improve upon our design. Yeah. Back to me, right? you guys are going to excuse me, I haven't had a lot of sleep in the last few days, so I'm a little bit like, uh, not, I know what I'm saying, I'll try to do better this, this time. So a really important part of this project is the optimization of the wing. Not only do we want the wing to move when the car is steering, but we want it to move at the right angle at each time. As engineers, uh, our goal is not to have, if we were a mechanic, uh, our goal would be to have a moving wing. As an engineer, you want to have a moving wing that moves at the right angle at all times to provide, as we said uh, last semester, best drag and downforce combination uh, possible. So in order to do this, we, we came up with this variable R that we're going to map. That variable R is going to be mapped to the total possible angles of the wing. That oscillates between around 0 degrees to 63, 65 degrees. Now, that mapping is going to take place after uh, the variables obtained from the sensor have been uh, meshed together, have been interrelated to each other. The formula that we came here, uh, allow me to explain briefly why each, each one of the variables uh, represents. This stands for the velocity that we're getting from the ECU of the engine. So at really high velocities, we risk uh, lifting the car. For example, Formula One and NASCAR cars, they want, they want to generate downforce when the car is going really fast. 
to avoid it from flying away. However, for Formula SAEs, it's not, we're not going at really fast velocities. Uh, we don't risk uh, lifting the car. So, and also, the faster we go, for example, let's say we have a 30 degree angle on, on the wing. If we increase the velocity, the downforce is going to increase accordingly, as we learned in, in fluid dynamics. So, um, that's, that's how we, we establish the inverse proportionality between the inclination of the wing and the velocity of the car. Meaning that the faster the car goes, the lower we want the, the winds to be in order to decrease the drag while keeping the same amount of downforce. Now for the steering, um, when we steer left and right, there's going to be a mirror image of each other. So whatever happens when you steer left is going to be mirrored uh, when you steer right. As, as everyone may know, when you steer to the left, for example, the two left inner tires, the inner tires from the curve are the ones that lose traction first. So that's where you want to add the extra downforce. So if you turn to the left, the left wind is going to come up and the right wind is going to lower. The ratio between S and V, we decided to uh, map it or to have it correspond to the ratio between the two angles of the wings. So for example, if we're driving at uh, uh, 20 miles, uh, 30 miles per hour, and then we're steering at a certain number of, of degrees. Once we get that number, we're going to map it to whatever, whatever the wings uh, total um, range of motion uh, is. And the last factor, the 100 plus B or 100, that's a magnification factor that we, we came up with. Uh, basically, keeping the same ratio. So for example, we're braking, uh, at, let's say we're going at 30 miles per hour, and we're steering to the left. We're breaking on top of that. We want both wings to lift uh, accordingly to uh, to help the car break as well as keeping the same the same ratio going. Now, once we have this, uh, once we have this equation, we can play around with it. We can, uh, for example, if we're going, if we're driving a really fast track where the velocity is a really important factor, and we want to ensure that as long as possible the wings are staying as flat as we can, so we don't have a lot of drag, we could increase uh, the, the velocity factor by two. We could have s divided by two b and then we multiply the magnification factor. So that way, we will ensure that the velocity will predominate uh, in front of, of the other variables. Uh, uh, for example, if we have a wave that has a lot of curves and a lot of braking, we want the braking and the steering to be more important than the velocity. So we could have the uh, 2s divided by, by b. In that way, we'll have the steering and the braking predominating in front of the velocity, and the, the wind will be higher, braking more, and assisting, assisting the travel. And, no, go back, please. And potentially in the future, what we're trying to do is install three um, dials or three uh, potential meters on the logic board that will allow us to toggle, to play with these three variables in the race. So as we're driving, as we're feeling how the spoiler is assisting the car with steering and driving, we're able to twist these dials and uh, make the three variables more important. Uh, for example, um, in, a, in, a, in a short part of the circuit, we can make the, um, the braking and the steering more important, and then in the, in the long part of the circuit, just in the straight, we can have the velocity uh, be more important. And then the video following, uh, this play. Yeah. Here we can see how we go. Uh, this is footage from a different school, they had an ink up here. With you. As you can see, when the driver brakes or steers, the corresponding layer of the wind looks up and down. Do you have any questions? Oh, sorry. Timeline. Here in the timeline, it has changed throughout the, our, our months. So you could see that we had planned to do analysis a lot more, but due to the car not being built yet, we'll just have to postpone. And at least we, we did meet up every other one. Every other one we, we feel that we have um, Now the next one is we do have to give a special thanks to Dramatic, Dr. Dramatic, Dr. Sukhanov, and the Panther Motorsports wow. FIU. Questions? Why did you choose to go with electric actuators instead of hydraulic actuators? That's a really good question. Thank you. For, first of all, we're dealing with, we're trying to look for linear actuators. Hydraulic, um, since we're dealing with the downforce when the, when the car, hydraulics would bounce a little bit from what we heard. So we tried to go with uh, electrical linear actuators instead. However, uh, they wouldn't actuate at enough velocity. They wouldn't lift the wind fast enough. 
normally when you buy an actuator, if you want a really fast actuator, it doesn't hold a lot of force. Uh, if you want a really, an actuator that holds a lot of force, it tends to be really slow. So finding one that would like, be fast and be strong at the same time turned out to be really expensive, around like $4,000 a piece. However, a servo motor or a rotational servo motor, it can provide the same uh, velocity of actuation and the same force that the $4,000 uh, linear actuator could at a much, much lower price. Any other questions? Could you do some calculations on uh, the strength of the bar that's holding that across? Because just looking at it, I don't know anything, but do you mean the, that the, the, the gold bars, the links? Right, the bar that goes across underneath uh, the fin, and you've got the actuator on just one edge. Is that going to be strong enough to hold that when you're going 50 or 60 miles an hour, which I assume you're probably getting to if you're averaging 35, that there's pretty good force down on that. Is it going to want to tip the wing? We ran simulation, and safety factor was like over two. And we also have a, we also have Are a bar. Are you talking about the bar we're talking about? Yes, if you're talking about this bar. Um, I didn't get No. So we're talking about this. That's what that right. long. Oh, the links? Yeah. No, the links, the links well, they're stainless steel, and they, they're way, way stronger than the maximum force we're going to have. The one I would question is the one that comes across. across. This one here? Back. Yeah. yeah, this is also, I mean, this is also stainless steel. The amount of force that we're going to be dealing with in Formula SA is not enough to, to I mean, we did calculations, it's not enough. We're going to have around 60 pounds of downforce maximum. And if, if, we, if we slam the brakes at maximum velocity, the maximum downforce we're going to get is 60 pounds. And the, I mean, I, I, I'm not really sure what the numbers came out with, but we have like around 120, 150 to set the factor for that bar. Okay. As long as you calculated something. Yeah, no, no, we, we did. Otherwise, we did. I, I can see the wings going like this. No, no, you know? <laughs> no we did. We, I mean, luckily for us, like, we're not dealing with a lot of force in, in this competition, so any, any like, stock that we can get from Home Depot will do the job. We don't have to get chromoly steel or, or, or anything. Like really, really strong. So, like low carbon, low dairy carbon, carbon steel or stainless steel will hold. Will hold that. Is there no pressure distribution laterally that uh, you need to take into account uh, for the proper actuation and operation of the spoiler? Pressure distribution, I said, like laterally. I mean, like the pressure distribution from here to here would be something like that or something like that. It would cover the whole surface of the wing. And it's our servos, sub servos, servers are getting the forces from the from the side. So it will be there will be more concentration of force on the on the inside plane. Also, we ensure that when the when the as you can see when the wing actuates, we made it so that this this chunk of the weight will will cover the hinges and everything that's that's behind it. So we don't generate like a turbulent flow. So basically, uh, the the driver's side will be somewhere around here. So all the all the flow will go around the driver's side, the body of the car, but nothing will hit the engine when it actually. Yes, sir. That's operational at this point in time. It, it is operational. Can we see it operate? No, because it is operational. We have we have the video that we showed you, but the, the problem is we're trying to uh, play around with the with the code to make it go faster, and we messed up one of the wings, the carbon fiber. We have to rebuild it. Uh -huh. So unfortunately, we can't we can't run it right now. Okay. Do you get any turbulence between the two wings? Yes. When you're going yes. around. It? We do, we do, but I mean, uh, we, we haven't really, the problem, we couldn't really calculate it because we need a complete assembly of the vehicle to, to have a, like, the, the flow profile that goes to the wing. It's not the same if we do an analysis by itself as if we do it with the car. So the car, the car will split the wing uh, quite a bit from the, the, the nose of the car, it will split the wing. So not a lot of wind will hit the center of the wings. If we do an analysis just by itself, there's a lot of turbulence, but that doesn't represent what's going to happen in the real, in the real, like whole assembly. Since we don't have the assembly for the vehicle, we weren't able to to test that. Do you intend to do any kind of uh, oh, yes. tunnel or wells? Once the car is done, I mean the, the car, the frame has changed a little bit because the car's design has like now the exhaust manifold is on the way, so we have to, the blue frame has to like hook up in a different area of the vehicle. Once that's done, we will uh, do a complete uh, analysis, like uh, flow analysis on ANSYS or SOLIDWORKS first, and then we have spoken to the wall of wind here at FIU, and they, they are like, as long as they, they have a certain rules, like when you, when you go there, everything has to be set, just place it there, run the wall of wind, and then take it out, you can't be inside, you can't be inside. <laughs> <laughs> but they said that as long as we follow those rules, we have like a, we have like a jig that we can use to take it there with the flex, with the, with the sensors already pre-installed, we just hit play and walk away, we're good to go, we should be allowed to. All right, well, no more questions, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.